We are, everything is all about simplifying radicals or square roots. If they are perfect squares and you know them, you don't have to do the work. Um, but sometimes you might have a perfect square, but you just don't know that it's a perfect square until you do that. Um, I just wanted to do a quick little review of yesterday. So if we are simplifying, whenever we are simplifying these square roots, what kind of numbers do we divide by to break it down? Prime numbers. And so for that very first example, 56, what's a prime number that we can divide that by? All right, we can divide that by 2. So we would just take 56 and divide that by 2, which gives us 28. Now what can we divide that by? Divide that by 2, and that gives us 14. What can I divide that by? 2. And that gives me 7. Now what can I divide 7 by? 2. All right, divide that by 7, and we get 1. And then we're looking for pairs. Do we have any? All right, we have a pair of 2s. So that pair of twos goes on the outside of the radical, and anything that is not a pair gets multiplied back in. So what is two times seven times one? 14. So this here is the simplified answer for square root of 56. Now what about 324? Do you, it's an even number, so do you think that we could at least try to simplify it? All right, get your calculators ready. What's 324 divided by 2? 162. All right, what's 162 divided by 2? 81. All right, so 81 is not divisible by 2, but is it divisible by 3? You said you guys do know the rule for divisible by 3. Like you add up the digits, 8 plus 1 is 9. 9 is divisible by 3, so you can divide it by 3. What is 81 divided by 3? 20. All right, then can we divide that by 3 again? Yeah. And we get 9, and I divide that by 3 again and get 3. And then finally, I can divide 3 by 3 and I get 1. Now look at our pairs. I have a pair of 2s. That's going to go on the outside. I have a pair of 3s. That's going to go on the outside. And I have another pair of threes that goes on the outside. The one doesn't really, you don't really even have to look at the one. Because multiplying by one doesn't change anything. Do we have any leftovers to put inside a radical? All right, if everything is a pair, this is a perfect square. What is two times three times three? It's 18. 324 is a perfect square. So I do want you guys to know that sometimes everything is a pair and it's perfect, so it'll just be a whole number. And then we talked about yesterday, if there's no pairs, it just goes back to the original. I think the example I showed you guys yesterday was 30. There's no pairs in 30, so it just stays square root of 30. Now, today we are adding one little step and I'm going to lower the blinds really quick because I can see some of you are getting blinded over there. So let me get that ready and then we will do that example. All right, so let's see. All right, Alaska, I'm gonna need your help to tilt that tree towards you just a little bit so it doesn't get Alright, there we go. Alright, so on the examples today, you're going to see some coefficients and you're going to see some variables. Of just adding one more step to it. Now, on that first example, um, the 3 square root of 18. Do you think that 3 is being added or multiplied to that square root? You say, if we don't see a symbol, it is multiplied. So what we are going to do is we are going to take 3 times whatever we get when we simplify it. So we're going to simplify the square root of 18. But then whenever we're done, we're going to multiply the outside coefficient by 3. 
So if we simplify the square root of 18, so we're going to do this off to the side. All right, we divide that by 2 and we get 9. And then divide by 3 and get 3. And then finally divide by 3 and get 1. So we have a pair. All right, so we have a pair of 3s and we have a leftover 2. So instead of writing the square root of 18, how would I write the simplified version of that? Three root two. We have a three on the outside, and then we have that leftover two. So we have three times the square root of two. So I simplified my square root. <coughs> and so now, the three here, we can multiply to that coefficient there. So three times three gives me nine root. So we simplify the radical, and then we multiply the coefficients. Simplify the radical, and then we multiply the coefficients. <laughs> All right, so I want you to take some time right now to simplify 160 by yourself. So we're going to take negative 8 times whatever we get when we simplify 160. So take some time to do that. If you have questions about it, raise your hand. I'll come to you. agree with all that division? Dividing by 2 all the way up until we get a 5? So I have a, two, a pair of 2's and I have a second pair of 2's. So those 2's go on the outside. What's left over on the inside? A 2 and a 5. So if I want to write that in simplified form, how would I rewrite that? 4 square root of 10. Very good. So we've simplified the radical, so now we just need to multiply that negative 8 to the coefficient. So what is negative 8 times 4? Negative 32, and then our square root of 10. Negative 32, square root of 10. So we simplify the radical, then we multiply by the coefficient. So some of your assignment today will have some coefficients. Now for the rest of this, I have some variables. And I'm going to show you the long way to simplify these. And as I don't know if you guys can see as we go through the examples, um, the co or the exponents on the variables get a little bigger. Um, I'm gonna show you guys the longer way to do this just so you can see where it comes from. But then you'll hopefully recognize a pattern and see a shortcut and that you won't have to write them all out unless you just absolutely need to. All right. Yeah, come back in like 10 minutes. All right. All right, so on um, this next example, we're taking the square root of 36 a squared and b to the fourth. First of all, what do you notice about 36? It's, uh, it, can, uh, it has an even root. It has an even root. What 
is that root? Six. All right, so hopefully you guys recognize that is a perfect square. And we know that the square root of 36 is just six. Now, with the variables, what does a squared really mean? A times a. And then b to the fourth means b times b times b times b. So I want to ask you if I give you, you could split up a squared into a times a. Does that make a pair? So if you have a pair, it goes on the outside of the root, correct? Now, b to the fourth really means b times b times b times b. How many pairs do I have there? All right, one, two. So a b times another b would be b squared. So however many pairs of variables you have, that's just the exponent you use. So we had one pair of a's, so it was a to the first. We had two pairs of b's, so it's b to the second. That's not too bad, is it? All right, now I do want to, we're gonna go through D together, then I'm gonna let you guys try some of these on your own. All right, for D, is 120 a perfect square? Yeah, it, now 121 is, but not 120. So we are going to have to simplify each part. So if we look here, if I want to simplify 120, we're just going to do our normal simplify, divide by 2 and get 60, divide by 2 and get 30, divide by 2 and get 15, and then at this point, does it really matter if you divide by 3 or 5? They're both prime, but I always just start with my small numbers. I'm going to go ahead and get on my tippy toes there. and they became 
1 and 2. And then over here, the 8 became a 4. Do you guys see a pattern? What's happening? The evens get split in half, and then the odds, you split it in half, but you always have a leftover. So like half of 5 is 2 and a half, so that's, we have 2 on the outside and then the 1 left over. So we are just dividing by 2 on those powers. So as the numbers get bigger, I don't expect you to write all of those out. Like on this last one, I don't want you to make 20 Z's. But I wanted you guys to see that. So I want you to try this one. 58 and the fourth. We're obviously going to go over it. But I want you to first simplify 50. And then we'll look at the A. this one 
one just a little bit ago. If I divide by 2 and I get 15 and I divide by 3 and get 5. All right, do I have any pairs there? So all of these numbers, where do they go? Do they go outside the root or inside the root? Yep, they stay inside the root. And so it just stays 30. Now for x's, how many pairs can I make out of 9? All right, four pairs. Do I have any left over? How many? One. Now how many pairs can I make out of 16? Eight pairs. Do I have any leftovers? What about 20 z, z to the 20th? How many? Ten pairs. Do I have any left over? And on that one, that's all you had to do. So we just added that one little step. Just remember with the variables, whatever that exponent is, find out how many pairs you can make out of those. And have you guys noticed if it's even, you have if it's odd, you just have a leftover. And if it's even, it's a perfect split. So you guys do have the assignment. Um, same thing as yesterday. If you guys want to do that work on paper and turn it into the box instead of doing it on Cami, I'm okay with that. Um, but I'm going to let you guys work. I got to get Caitlin started on her quiz. And